All right, today we're talking about how to get the perfect web setup for your USDZ file. Okay, so to get started, we need to start with creating an Adobe Aero experience. Now we've done this uh, a fair few times. I'm gonna create a new one here and we're just gonna set one up so that we have something that we can place down on the ground and that's about it. We're not, we're, do we're not doing anything fancy here. We're just getting an object ready so that we can place down and utilize it in our USDZ. So I'm going to set this up and we're then going to be able to bring this across onto the computer so we can take the next step. So give me a sec, I'll get this created. Okay, so we've got our experience created here. Uh, we've done something really simple, just a ball inside of a, uh, I guess a frame is what it was technically put in. So we're going to now take this and we want to export it. So we want to use the export functions when we go export as, and we want to export as the .usdz. It's going to take a moment to go through and actually generate the export function, uh, the export file, sorry. And once we have the .usdz actually downloaded onto the device, I'm going to utilize AirDrop to then put that onto my Mac. If you're using something like a, a Windows device, you're gonna have to go through and actually transfer the file, or you could send the file to yourself, something like that. Uh, but give it time, because it does take a while to generate these files. We're gonna export it, we're gonna bring it onto the computer, and we're gonna go from there. Okay, so now that we've got our USDZ file exported, I've airdropped it onto my computer. We can see it down the left side here, example.usdz. We wanna upload that into your website, no matter how you do that. So you might be doing it through an FTP manager, you might be doing it through a backend of a website. Whatever way you do this, um, make sure that you just go ahead and, and double check that the file is actually accessible after the fact. So if you're on like a, a desktop or whatever, you can go like, in my case, it's called example.usdz hit that it adds it to my downloads we can see um, in the bottom left there example.usdz so it's bringing that file in and it's downloading it now our ideal case here is that on ios devices so ipads iphones that this um, option comes up to see the actual augmentation uh, come up on your phone because when you utilize a usdz file on these uh, devices it's actually able to be placed down and it's also able to be able to see in, in the object view so what we want to do is on these devices offer the opportunity to see the augmentation and on alternative devices be able to provide some sort of visualization at least so as an example you might want to show like a youtube video of it in action and maybe tell them hey go get an ios device to try this out yourself so let's build this in and we're gonna start by getting the basics into place. Okay, so for this example, I have just a, a really blank page. It's hardly styled at all, uh, but it's it meant to be like an example blog page or like a page on your website where it's got some sort of title, it's got some content, it's got a see it in action section and then some more information. And so what I'm wanting here is uh, to have a button that when they're on the iOS device to say, click here to see it in action, and when they're on other devices to have a YouTube video that plays instead. So let's go ahead and jump into the code here. So this is the real basic uh, code here, nothing crazy at all. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a, an ahref here to have uh, a direct access to this file. So we're gonna want it to link to the example.usdz and uh, check it out. And so we want it to be so they can check it out when they're on the iOS and otherwise we want to embed a, a YouTube video. So let's head to YouTube real quick and let's go to the third Aurora uh, page. I'm, I'm just going to take this video that we have on the th third Aurora page, but you would want to actually film yourself uh, watching or going through the augmentation so they can see it as a e direct example. So in this case, I'm just gonna copy and paste that in here and save. So right now, if we go and reload this page, uh, we can then see the check it out now link here. And we can also see the video that if we click, it will play the video because it's just a standard YouTube embed on the page. So that's the real basic. So now we have the basic elements on the, on the page that we need. 
So now let's actually expand this so that we can handle are they on an iOS device or not. So let's jump back into the code here and we're going to utilize uh, Stack Overflow. So there's a piece of code on here that's basically saying if uh, it finds any of these strings in the navigator for this actual device that you're utilizing or this alternate piece for handling iPads on iOS 13, then we want to return true. If it's any other device outside of an iPad, an iPhone, iPod, then we're going to return false. So we're going to utilize this in our code here. So we're going to utilize some JavaScript here, which is script type equals JavaScript. Uh, we're going to paste this in because we want to use this as a function in our code. And let's just style that up slightly. And then we're going to write a piece of code where it's basically saying, uh, my apologies, outside the function, where we want to request the iOS function and that, that returns true or false. So if we just do alert iOS and then go back to our page here, we then get a false in the box here. So this is what we're going to use to then dictate, do we show the button or do we show the YouTube embed? So I'm going to set up some bit of code here uh, just to have, have it hide or show based on what is being shown. Okay, so we've gone through and expanded the code just a bit to handle out the different cases. So we can see here in the see it in action section now we have uh, two divs in inside here, which is div iOS dash Y and div iOS dash N. And this is basically to toggle, yes, this is supposed to be for iOS or no, this isn't supposed to be for iOS. And so what we have down below is still our iOS function where it's telling us yes or no, this is an iOS device. And then we're simply using that. So if iOS is true, we want to go ahead and show the dash Y element and hide the dash N. Otherwise, hide the, the dash Y and show the dash N. So if we go back to the Google Chrome now and reload, re we can then see, uh, see an action here where we have just the video and then the more information and the hello world. Whereas if I go across to an iPad, to an iPhone, to whatever device here, we'll then be able to see uh, this with the other piece of information. So let's quickly do that now. And so now we're on the iPad and you can see here that we don't have the YouTube video anymore in the see it in action section. We now have check it out. So if I use the check it out button, it will now take me straight to that, to the object viewer that uh, iOS has as native. So let's click that one. And so we can see here the object viewer has now loaded up and we can scan our area to place down the objects. So we have this here, we can rotate it, we can we can do all the normal stuff, all the stuff that you would normally expect with objects. We can uh, we can do in AR and we can also switch this to object view and, and just play around with it uh, however we like. But yeah, that's the basics behind uh, having an object placed down in web and handling it safe so that uh, someone who doesn't have that form format type doesn't get the option to just download it directly to their browser. And so that's it guys, we've gone through, we've set it up, we've got the file, we've got the page all set up and looking for those devices. Guys, if you have any other ideas for videos, please let me know. And look, if you think there's anything further I could have done in this one, chuck it down in the comments. Till next time, see ya.